Hi everyone, back with the weekly update on the Hummingbird. Uh, so one of the things I've always done with the aircraft that I've built is at 10 hours, I actually down them if you want to call it that, I do change the oil and go through a very thorough, almost a condition inspection, because at 10 hours is when you're gonna find, uh, you know, anything maybe you did wrong, and maybe some things that need maintenance, right? So, and especially on a helicopter, lots of moving parts. So getting to those 10, 11 hours, um, I think I shared with many of you in a couple updates, we were using the Chadwick to balance the blades. I'm slowly dialing that in. We'll show you some videos here. I actually finally left and went to a local airport, Atlanta Speedway, actually where I got uh, helicopter training a couple years ago. But uh, there's a nice cement uh, cross out there in the middle of the field, and you'll see I was able to do some, basically some 360s around the point. And uh, the helicopter is very, very stable. In cruise flight, the stick is almost perfectly centered. So that tells me I've got it set up right on the hub up there. I was pretty pleased with that. So it's normal, the stick is back there for takeoff and then forward for flight, but it's just about perfectly centered. So I think I got that aligned properly. Still trying to dial in the blades, it's, it's a balance, right? So I've had it up to 85, 90 knots now, and there's a little more shake there than in the hover. So now we're gonna start the process of tweaking at cruise flight and balancing some of the hover stuff. So I managed to do steep turns, some fast stops, uh, hovers, as I've mentioned, both nose in, 360s, uh, you know, center of axis there, 360s. So that's all working well. Takeoff and the landings are really a lot of fun right now. I'm starting to enjoy them. But let's talk about the maintenance side, especially for those of you built helicopters or are building helicopters or even built aircraft, some of the things you wanna look at. So one of the things that's been nagging me over here, and I haven't figured it out yet, so I'm gonna share this with you as I'm going through it, is the airspeed on the first few flights I noticed was kind of stagnating right about 50 something knots. I might've mentioned that in a prior video. So I've been trying all kinds of things with the pitot tube, finally disconnected the static side of the pitot tube and voila, airspeed works well. It appears doing the GPS triangle, I might be three to four knots high and actually flew alongside another RV8 and kind of verified that airspeed and the altitude was maybe off by 30 feet, which this airplane is really off, don't know, right? But anyway, um, what I've done so far, it turns out the pitot tube was leaking on the pitot side and the static side. So I have fixed the pitot side and then the static side I fixed with an O-ring inside there. So I'm anxious to go test fly this now and see if we get any difference. Um, I, I, usually pretty good at static system. This one has me uh, confounded a little bit, but we're gonna get there with it. Let's see, what else are we gonna talk about maintenance wise? We'll show you a still picture. Uh, it actually is relaxing enough now in flight that I can take the phone and take some pictures. I could have done it with a screenshot on the EFIS, but I didn't think about that. So I grabbed the phone just to show you the CHTs and cruise flight are all really lined up pretty nicely now. And as are the EGTs. And uh, what I've done, I think I mentioned once before, I put a, a, a little richer jet in it. I'm flying now on a, a number 40 jet. We started with a 42, I thought it was kind of lean. And then I put a little richer uh, injector nozzle in cylinder six that brought that one down a little bit. And now I've also put a little leaner uh, nozzle in cylinder number five by just a half. So it's a 0.0275 now instead of a 0.028. And uh, you'll see that in the picture, the EGTs. I just want to bring number five up just a little and we'll see what happens. We abruptly end. Carol cut me off with a question. We thought, okay, I better answer it. So what's your question again? So you're talking about nozzles and injectors. And um, I'm just curious as to where they go, what's going on with them. And I understand they're controlling something. Yeah, great, great question, actually. And I probably should have. Uh, not pretend everybody knows what I'm talking about. So here, I don't know if you can zoom in on these, and I'll put a light on them and see if that helps. No, the light makes it worse. Okay, okay. Yeah, how's that? Good. Good? good? So if you look at the one right here, this is a jet, okay? And what that does, that controls the fuel flow through the fuel servo, which is the main part of the airflow performance fuel system. Right back in there, you can see that red, red anodized fuel controller, okay? It's basically your throttle. And if you, I don't know if you can get down here, maybe I'll just take a still picture, but the jet, there's a little fitting down inside here and you probably can't see it. I'll get a still picture and we'll do it. But the jet, what you do is you change out the jet to make certain you've got the proper fuel flow for the engine at the highest power settings. 
So as I mentioned, we started out with a 42, and now we're down to a 40, okay? The smaller the number, the leaner the jet. So in other words, a 40 is a richer jet than a 42. We're gonna put more fuel through that thing. So that works out very nicely. I wish I had the cover off here, but basically on an injected engine, from that fuel servo, a line goes up to what's called a fuel flow divider. It sits right up here on top of the engine. Is that the spider? Yes, it's okay. also called a spider. And from there, injector lines go out to each cylinder. They're stainless steel lines. And so you have a nozzle that injects fuel into each cylinder. So what we can do is actually balance those cylinders so that they actually all peak at the same time. And you do that with various sizes of injector nozzles. Excuse me. So this one here is a stock uh, 280. And then Don puts numbers on them. And you won't see those here. But they're Don no Ribeiro. Don Ribeiro at Airflow Performance puts numbers on them so that we could actually change these things. You just, with a 3H wrench, you take the cap off of the injector nozzle, move it out of the side, and these slide in and out. So we can actually balance all of those cylinders with the, uh, individually. So, and you can tell that from the engine monitor? Yeah, we look at the engine monitor there, and you, we can actually see all the EGTs and the cylinder head temps, okay? So we'll show you some still pictures here while we're talking about this for you, okay? So I've got that done. As I mentioned, we changed the oil. One of the things I also did when I changed the oil, if you come around here, and if you can see this here, this is a, a Challenger or a K&P products air, uh, oil filter. I really like these things. I had them on all my aircraft. And uh, we'll show you a picture of what they look like. But what I like about them is inside, there's a, a screen that actually pops out. So no more trying to cut open oil filters. This thing comes off and it's got a magnet in there plus a screen that pops out for cleaning. Again, it's called Challenger for the certified ones and K&P. They're the exact same uh, kind of filter pretty much uh, for the experimental aircraft. And uh, you also get some extra cooling here with the fins. They're a little more compact size. Um, they are certified, so you get the same flow, and you can get them for the, you know, the uh, CH48 108s, 109s, 110s. Uh, if you have the male ones, uh, you just order the nipple that, uh, to add to it. Uh, otherwise, they spin right on. So that's kind of nice. So I've added that as well. And then one of the other things, you know, again, we're looking at maintenance problems. So uh, I noticed a broken uh, attach point here on a muffler. It had cracked. And so I talked to Brad at Vertical Aviation, and, you know, Brad's been super with support. And he said, you know, we were afraid that might happen, and I think he's seen it once before. So I sent the mufflers in, and Brad has actually added and really beefed up this area now. So we not only have a tab coming up this way, we've got a tab wrapped around welded and then they, these two welded together so that's going to be much stronger and that hooks up right here remember one of the other videos we showed you how we had these things hooked up now one of the things i'm going to make a change on here as well is i think it's too stiff here and i think we're just transmitting too much vibration so much like we do on the rvs i'm going to cut these tubes here and put a piece of uh, tubing in there with hose clamps, and then we'll allow for some vibration separation here and a little bit of flexing rather than hard so mounting those. how much of the tube do you take out? I'll probably take out a half inch or so. Okay. Okay, maybe a little more, and just enough so the tube will be there. We shouldn't get much vibration. These are attached to the exhaust uh, stacks, and they're pretty hard pointed up at that end. And speaking of the exhaust stacks, you're probably going, well, where are they? I don't see them. So again, in, in closely scrutinizing everything on the airplanes, one of the things I noticed is that the ceramic coating that we had put on there was actually flaking off. So I called the company that did it and they said, no problem. And so we took them off and they are redoing them. So uh, And they claim that, that black works better than silver. Yeah, that's a good comment. So we, you know, we had asked what colors they had and they said silver, chrome looking. I said, well, that looks nice. So we put that on. And then this time when we talked about it, they said, you know, the black really works a whole lot better. And I said, put the black on. So we should get those back this Wednesday and be able to move ahead now and, uh, make some more progress flight testing. Okay, so uh, here's the screen that actually goes inside that K&P oil filter. I knew I had it in my hand when we started and I just couldn't find it when we were talking about it. And right here, you can see the little magnet on it. So this whole thing pops in there. Let me it's, see the magnet. Right there's the magnet. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing pops into that casing, spins tight. It's got a pressure release valve in case the screen should become clogged. One of the things I will tell you for those of you who might consider putting this on your aircraft is the first time uh, you check this one, you're going to think your engine's coming apart. It does a much, much better job than our paper filters have ever done. So you'll get used to it. It just does a really good job of getting all the junk out of the oil, most of which you'll find are carbon flakes. Okay? So that's that. There were two other areas that I noticed needed some maintenance work. If you look up inside here, and it was much easier to see before when this was all red silicone baffling. Uh, you can probably see this way over across that side. Well, I ended up with a little bit of a tear in the silicone baffling there. It was red and it was 1 16th inch thick. And uh, so what I decided to do since I had it down was to go ahead and replace all of this with a little thicker silicone baffling. It was a lot of work. But I just would like to make sure it's not going to, you know, fail again. So I'm going to um, show the picture from underneath okay. where you can yeah, see. Yeah, the... you can see right here. Okay, so it's black. It's from Aircraft Spruce. It's actually FAA and PMA certified. It's 332nd inch and it's good from minus 80 to 425 Fahrenheit. So that should work well. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm at that point in time when flight testing, when you're flying along and you go, something just changed. And I wasn't quite certain what it was. And what I noticed was all of a sudden the oil temp kind of jumped up about uh, five or so degrees. And, uh, and it kept going up a little bit. And I thought, well, it's time, to, it's time to land anyway. It was getting a little late in the afternoon. And sure enough, a piece of that rubber baffling had come off and gone through the cooler deck and was actually rested against the oil cooler. So I felt real good that that explained the increase in oil temp. So got rid of that. Fix that, hopefully. And then the only other area I can think about that we might talk about here are the pitch control links, okay? The pitch control links on the tail rotor. These are right here. There's two of things, two of these right here, okay? And I know these things take a lot of abuse because even on my Schweitzer helicopter, I ended up replacing these. Uh, and, and so what I noticed on these is the bearings were wearing. They were fretting a little bit. So I talked to Brad about it and uh, I actually sent the bearings to Brad, and Brad sent back some more bearings. We're going to try. These are actually the original bearings off of uh, the original Sikorsky setup. So they're a little heavier duty, I think. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on those. Um, again, not an abnormal thing, but with 11 hours, I, I felt it was just a, just a little too much, and maybe we ought to take some uh, proactive uh, maintenance on that. And on those, um, you said he switched out from the older ones because the newer ones have something different? Yeah, so these are old style bearings. They're way back and you know, they, they're, I don't know how close you can get in there, but these require greasing, okay? Uh, most new rod end bearings today are either self lubricating or you just end up putting a little bit of, uh, you know, some kind of liquid in there. These do require packing with grease every once in a while. So okay. they're a little so different, older style. it was an style. improvement. It was supposed, supposed to be an improvement. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. Other than that, you know, I can't wait to get back in the air again. I am having a good time with it. It's a lot of fun and uh, I'm kind of annoyed these next two days. The weather's kind of nice in Atlanta, but uh, uh, we'll get there. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon.